Hey guys, I have been gone for a couple of weeks and I just wanted to come back and tell you about my birthday present that I finally gotten and I hate it. <laughs> um, okay, so this is going to be a little different video. I'm doing a review of this Nikon P1000, uh, the Coolpix P1000 and I have been wanting this camera for over a year and a half. I have been a avid follower of the Canon uh, Rumors blog, almost said, no I did say Canon, <laughs> of the Nikon Rumors blogs uh, and they have been saying that this camera was on its way. They were leaking the designs and the patents and guessing about what it was going to be and so it finally went for sale on September the 6th. I was on a waiting list from July the 12th and I finally got it on September the 13th and oh, this camera on paper is everything that I need for wildlife photography, for vacation photography, but the pictures are not there. And I don't know, I'm going to I'm going to explain a lot in the video. So, if you're interested in that, keep watching. Um, I'm going to show examples of what I got with this. I have shot it on a tripod, on a monopod. I am a professional photographer, so the first thing that I did was go through and set up the menu, set up the uh, the custom settings to how I would want that to be. I tried shooting in RAW. Um, I tried the highest quality JPEGs. The noise reduction software, you can't turn that off, but I turned it to the smallest number. I changed the user settings. I have done everything that my professional photography brain can let me know to do to make the pictures acceptable. And we took this on a trip, and the whole point in the trip was to get wildlife photography. And so this has a 3,000 millimeter zoom, which should be amazing for wildlife photography. I am afraid that none of the pictures that we got on our trip are gonna be usable. And what I like to do is I sell some of the pictures for stock photography. And then I also like to blow up really large prints um, for a little store there in Colorado that we have my label on. And we also have a website that is photographybydina.zenfolio.com forward slash wildlife. And I sell some of our wildlife photos there. These are not up to the standard that I would feel comfortable with providing for stock photography. In fact, they're probably going to get turned down for stock photography. They need to be sharp, they need to be um, not pixelated, and that's what I'm seeing when I look at these pictures. So I'm really disappointed in what I've come up with. I'm making this video because I know there's not a whole lot of videos out there on this P1000. Uh, I'm making it because I have only seen beautiful images and so and this is probably gonna sound conceited maybe but I have a photography studio I have owned a photography studio for 14 years um, I know Canon cameras inside and out but I've also used Nikon cameras uh, I know that there's a lot of terminology that are different but if you put a camera in my hand I can pretty much know when I go through the menu the things to change to make the images how I want them. Uh, this camera, no matter what I did, the pictures are not up to my quality. I feel like, 70% of my brain feels like there's something wrong with this one. If you just were not discerning at all and you didn't care that your pictures look like watercolor, then you might like this. So I don't know who's going to spend a thousand dollars for this awesome lens, but your pictures are unacceptable. I'm sending it back. Um, I've debated about getting a refund or getting a replacement camera. Uh, the truth is, I don't need this camera again for another year. We will go on the trip again in a year, and I'm hoping that if I send it back now and get a refund, that maybe, I think Nikon has some problems with this camera. Uh, I think that in a year's time, hopefully they'll find updates and fix the bugs, and I know that they're not gonna change that F8 aperture. Whenever you zoom out, it's gonna go to F8. Right. Um, I know that they're not gonna change that really above 400 ISO, you get crazy grain that's probably a given 
my approach to combating those two situations was to do on a tripod. Um, tripod as low ISO as I could possibly get and that F8 the tripod was going to help me <laughs> stabilize even though it does has have image stabilization in it I wasn't going to depend on that so I brought gear we were hiking in with all this gear um, and it still didn't work uh, this camera has amazing features it has amazing options it'll shoot raw it'll shoot 4k video I think it did better in the video department than it did the pictures and I'm going to show you examples of what I'm talking about so that you know <laughs> that I'm not just being overly picky maybe I am being overly picky I don't know like I said I'm coming from a DSLR Canon background and now I'm wanting a vacation camera to produce the same quality images and I realized those expectations are crazy but then I was thinking but who would be happy with this camera? I don't know. Somebody that knew absolutely nothing about what a picture was supposed to be? Where are you going to find that person? Basically, our trip is useless. The trip that we went on to get all these pictures, to get all this stuff, we ended up taking pictures with my husband's brand new iPhone, and those pictures are so much better quality than what I have from this camera. Uh, and I'm going to show you examples. I'm going to show you what I'm complaining about and what I'm talking about. We're going to move into that in just a minute if you want to see examples. I know this video is super long. Um, I just wanted to have it in my hand to tell you my thoughts on it, to tell you why I'm going to send it back. And I, okay, let me go on to say, I'm not just trying to just bash this camera. There may be something physically wrong with the version that I have. So before you decide not to get this camera or to get this camera or to just totally bash me, comment and let me know if you have this camera or if you've done a review and you're not seeing what I'm seeing, great, let me know that because that will help me determine if I want to replace this camera uh, eventually or go another route. Uh, the problem, there's a couple of problems that I have and it probably won't do it now that I'm talking about it, but let me turn it on. And it does have the articulating, I mean, it has great features. It really does. It's not that it is just a total dud and that it needs to be like a doorstop. It doesn't have a battery in it. So let me put a battery in it. Look at this zoom. Look at that. <laughs> that would be impressive if they actually made good pictures. Uh, you know, I mean, everything about this camera is impressive, except the pictures are junk. I am in manual mode, and I doubt that you're going to be able to see anything here. I'm in manual mode. When I flip to manual, these two options are lit up in green which means I should be able to change those two options <clears throat> one of them would be with this back dial here and there's a little icon above it to tell you that the other one is meaning this dial up here so when I try to change that and now it's working but half the time when I was using this camera it wouldn't change anything both of them and now let's see we're looking at it again and then I use this dial and I can change the shutter speed and aperture. It's working now how it's supposed to work. Half the time when I used this camera in manual, they would both be lit up. I could change the aperture and never the shutter speed. And so I thought, okay, what am I missing? So we went on a day trip. We drove about eight hours that day. I downloaded the manual, read everything about it. <laughs> this is all it said. Use this dial to change one thing. Use the other dial to change. I'm not sure which one. I think this one changes the aperture. Yeah. So this one changes the aperture. The other, cha other changes the shutter speed. Why is it not working? I don't know. So that was an issue. I started seeing that and I thought, okay, what's going on here? So then I switched to AV mode. There's your modes on the top. We've just changed to AV mode. So at AV for the longest time it was locked in and now it is. It's showing a 30th of a second. So we're at 3.2 a 30th of a second. But as I move the camera around and I'm shooting here at my light uh, it's 500th of a second and then 160th so it changes, you know, like it's supposed to in AV mode. 
it was locked at a hundred and at a hundred it was locked at a thirtieth of a second so there is an option and so I know I got gotcha, you I got gotcha. you okay so there is an option I got gotcha. you all right so under your menu you would go down to the little one that looks like a wrench which is all your settings and there is where you would have your digital zoom okay see I got you there too mine's turned off so if you're thinking well that's why you hate these pictures that's why they're so crunched and pixelated and look watercolored because you're using digital zoom nope first thing I did was turn my digital zoom off so that's not what is affecting me here oh there is an option in under your menu function where you can go and you can set and say I do not want my shutter speed to fall below a 30th of a second and I have already gone into the menu and I have made sure that I don't have it limited where it has to stay at a 30th of a second uh, because the night that I was playing with it in manual mode it wasn't locked at a 30th it was some random other like one hundredth of a second or something that you would never use outside at night uh, when you're trying to get a picture of the creek lit by moonlight you wouldn't shoot at a 50th I mean you wouldn't shoot at a hundredth of a second unless you had an ISO that was crazy huge and 400 is not so 70% of me feels like maybe there is a problem with this one that I have just uh you know I have with my luck I have gotten one that is just not right and I'm hoping that that's the case and so that's kind of why I wanted to make this video before I sent it back so that those of you that have this camera and you're not having those problems please comment please let me know I'll explain the situations that we use this camera how we use this camera uh, settings that I was on I'm gonna show you some examples I do think it did better with video from what I could tell but I didn't do a lot of video uh, but I do have a couple of clips of that okay in this clip we are starting it at 3,000 millimeters zoomed in I'm not sure that it's gonna show you what I'm actually seeing but it's almost like the picture is vibrating or moving um, but the zoom is pretty incredible because when we zoom out here at the end you can see us go back to 24 millimeters so maybe I'm just expecting too much I don't know and this clip looks normal to me no problems Okay, another example of a handheld shot at 3000 millimeter. You are supposed to be able to handhold this because it has the image stabilization. Actually, Nikon calls it VR. So this should have worked. Uh, it is at F8, 320th of a second, 400 ISO. Okay, so we've just looked at how handheld is not working too great. So we switched to a monopod. I know that this is zoomed to 3000 millimeter, but on a monopod that should make up for any motion blur. We did turn off the vibration reduction. It's at a hundredth of a second at F8, and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see that this is not a usable picture. Okay, this little animal is probably the best shot that I got from the whole trip. It is zoomed in at 3000 millimeter and it's handheld. F8, ISO 400, 400th of a second should be perfect. I'm going to zoom in so you can see the watercolor stuff that I'm talking about. If you've watched any of the reviews, they talk about that this camera is kind of set for a specific photography group and it's usually those that are into wildlife because I mean unless you're gonna be a spy and you're gonna zoom in on and spy on somebody uh, really the uses for this are really limited as coming from a professional photographer standpoint you're probably not going to want to have this as a professional photography camera. Um, there's a lot of reasons why. One of the reasons is because the ISO um, is really crippled. Uh, they took the same sensor that was in the P900 and put it in this camera from what I have read and researched and come to my conclusion. And the ISO suffered anyway uh, it will go up to 6400 no no yeah yeah you can turn the dial to 6400 but no forget it it has custom options where you can limit the range of the ISO and that was one of the first things that I did after a couple of test shots when at 6400 it looked like a jigsaw puzzle it was just 
<laughs> not usable at all. And I can show you that. I should have examples of that shot. So we'll go look at the 6400 ISO. Again, I am not sure that you guys are able to see what I'm seeing on my monitor. Uh, this is going to be at 1080p, so I'm not sure how that's going to affect the quality of what y'all are seeing. But this is an example of nothing else but the bad ISO situation. You cannot shoot over, I found, 400 ISO. Uh, this was at 6400, and I'm going to show you how terrible that looks. I knew going in that this camera had the same sensor as the P900, which did not have great ISO uh, to work with. So I was just testing it out. The first couple of shots that we did, we tried it at 6400 ISO, and this is what you get. So that is not usable at all. Um, in my experience, I limited it so that it would not go above 400 ISO to hopefully solve some of my watercolor issues, but it did not. But eventually I ended up shooting from 1 to 400 ISO. Okay, that is not a situation that most people can get away with. If you were going to use this camera and you wanted to do indoor shots, natural light with no flash, forget it. There's no way you can do that at 400 ISO. Um, so you're limited right there to 400 ISO if you're trying to get away from the grain. It has noise reduction capabilities built in that you cannot turn off. And I think what I'm seeing is a horrible noise reduction on all the images because they all look painted, they look watercolor to me, and I think that has to be the noise reduction. And if you could turn that off, I would love to be able to do that to turn it off to see if there was a better quality image that could be produced from turning that off. But I could not turn it off and none of the custom functions allowed you to turn it off. Okay, I didn't like that at all. So that was strike one. Strike two is that it's got a 2.8 to 8 aperture. And if you zoom at all, I, I, don't, I don't exactly know where it changes, but not much. So you're at 24 millimeter, right? 24? Yeah. You're at 24 wide open at 2.8. If you zoom in the least little bit, that aperture changes and it goes to 3.5, 4, 5.6, yada, 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 until you're at 3,000 millimeters, you're at f8. So if you know anything about photography at all, if you're trying to zoom in on a moose, and you are required to shoot at f8, there's no other option, which I'm not faulting Nikon for that because if you had a 3000 millimeter zoom at 2.8, you're probably looking at 30 grand. <laughs> so I knew that that was just a given. And so I prepared for that by bringing tripods and monopods and I was ready. Even though this camera has a brand new image stabilization system in it. And I have seen videos where people are hand holding this camera. And I've seen where people are taking shots of light bulbs inside of like the Empire State Building and you can zoom in and see the light bulb inside the room. That is amazing. I could not get this camera there. Eliminate shooting natural light indoors. No way. You are shooting at F8 and you're crippled to 400 ISO. If I tried to take a picture zoomed in on something, it was so blurry um, that you couldn't tell what it was. So we tried a monopod with a professional video head on that to completely stabilize it. The monopod has feet on it, um, so it's as steady as a monopod can possibly get. Pictures were unusable. But then even with everything perfect, at 100 ISO, bright open sun, uh, the animal was grazing out there and I didn't even have to zoom very far. The picture still looked painted. They look like watercolor. On this one of the sheep, you can see that it automatically goes to F8 if you zoom. We've got 500th of a second, so there shouldn't be motion blur from trying to hold that still. This was a handheld shot. 220 ISO, not even zoomed to the full extent, about halfway at 1400 millimeter. I'm going to zoom in so you can actually see what the shot looks like at 100%. Okay, here's another example. This should be as sharp as it could possibly be since our shutter speed is 1 500th of a second. 
Still that f8 because we're zoomed all the way out to 3000 millimeter and this was on ISO 280. I had it set on auto to go anywhere from 100 to 400. So this should be a crisp clear picture and it's not. Okay, so then this last example, I know y'all are getting tired of seeing the same thing. I just want to know if y'all are seeing what I'm seeing. Uh, this one's not at F8. This is at 5.6. We are not zoomed out very far at 750 millimeter. I don't know that I've ever said that in my life, that 750 millimeter is not zoomed out very far. But anyway, uh, we are at 500th of a second, 220 ISO, 5.6, 750 millimeter. I'm going to zoom in and see if y'all can see what I'm talking about with the painted watercolor effect. Even the dirt looks weird to me. I'm not happy with this. I am broken hearted and sad but I'm going to send it back. And so I'm anxious to see once I get this posted, if you guys can offer me some kind of insight, let me know if you think that I have a dud, if you own this camera or own the P900, which is basically the same guts as this one. Um, if your results have been stellar, then great. Then I will purchase another one and go on my next trip ready and happy and prepared. But this one, I'm just really bummed because I don't have any pictures that I'm gonna keep to show for it. Uh, this was a thousand dollar camera. The pictures should be decent. I mean, if I can get, if I can get good quality pictures from my iPhone, that's a thousand dollars. Shouldn't I get decent quality pictures from a camera that's a thousand dollars? Even though, yeah, I know you're paying for this massive lens. The lens is great, but what good is the lens if the picture quality is junk? So there's gotta be something wrong with this. If there's not something wrong with this, then this camera gets a thumbs down from me. And I've seen a couple of videos where people are getting amazing pictures from this. So I know there's gotta be something that I'm missing. I just feel like I have a dud. But if not, and this is the way this camera's supposed to perform, then it's not the one for me. This one is going back. And I really am broken hearted. I mean, honestly, I'm sad because I wanted to love this camera. It's everything that I needed in terms of wildlife photography and what I wanted to do, have everything all in uh, one box, all inclusive. I don't have to carry a big box of lenses. They're all in here and that's great. It just doesn't take good pictures at all. Okay, so that's my review of this. I guess if you call that a review, it's more like a plea for help. Like somebody tell me that something's wrong with this camera so that I can repurchase this for next year's trip. But as of right now, I cannot give this anything but a thumbs down. That's it. That's it, thumbs down. Uh, I don't care how good your lens is. I don't care how good your image stabilization is. If your pictures are junk, what is the point, you know? So that's that. All right, y'all have a good afternoon and I will see you on the next one. Bye.